Welcome to our channel, where we dive into the ups and downs of cute girl relationships and the challenges people face in their everyday lives. Today, we're starting with a story that hits close to home. I hate my mother-in-law. From the moment I met her, I knew she didn't like me, and accepting me as her daughter-in-law was never easy for her. But this time, she went too far, pushing me to the point where I couldn't hold back anymore. I had to air her dirty laundry. Now, you might think I'm just a sweet and caring person, the kind you'd compare to a harmless kitten. But my mother taught me something important. When people are mean for no reason, you need to stand up for yourself, even if it means fighting dirty. And this time, my mother-in-law decided to be the biggest troublemaker in the family, assuming I wouldn't fight back. But she was wrong. My husband works in the film industry as part of the technical staff, which means he travels all over the world for various shoots. One of the perks of his job is that sometimes he invites me or the whole family to join him on these trips, giving us the chance to go sightseeing. This month, we had a trip to New Caledonia planned, a trip that had been on the calendar for a while. Everything was set, and my mother-in-law and I even made it to the airport on time, which was a small miracle considering the traffic. We unloaded all our bags at the airport, and I carefully counted to make sure we hadn't forgotten anything. Feeling confident that everything was in order, we headed inside. My mother-in-law asked me to drop off our luggage at the baggage counter, so I separated my hand luggage from the checked-in bags and asked her to do the same. Then I told her to go ahead with the security check while I finished up with the luggage drop-off. After completing the luggage drop-off, I went through the security check myself and started looking for my mother-in-law. I spotted her from a distance, and she seemed to be searching for something. When I approached her, she told me that one of her handbags was missing the one that contained her diabetes medication. She insisted that she couldn't leave without it. I told her to take a deep breath and try to remember she might have accidentally left the bag with the rest of the luggage. She seemed flustered and couldn't recall, so she asked me to check if it was there. Dutifully, I went back to the baggage counter and asked the attendant if any luggage had been left behind or if one of our bags had gone overweight since one was missing. Unfortunately, the attendant said everything was in order and there were no unmarked or extra bags. Feeling dejected, I headed back to my mother-in-law, but before I could go through the security check again, airport security stopped me and asked me to follow them. Confused, I asked what was going on, but they insisted that everything would be explained once I came with them. They led me to a private holding area where they informed me that a woman had reported me. Apparently, she overheard me using the words gun and drugs, and she feared I might be a terrorist. They said they needed to ensure I wasn't hiding anything. I was absolutely furious. I hadn't made any such comments. I barely had time to check in before our flight. Then, a chilling thought crossed my mind. My mother-in-law. It suddenly hit me that she might be behind this. I told the officers I would fully cooperate with their investigation, confident that they would find nothing. After an exhausting 18 of questioning and searching, I was finally cleared. Once the ordeal was over, I showed the officer who had mentioned the woman's report a picture of my mother-in-law and asked if she was the one who reported me. When he confirmed it was her, a wave of rage surged through me. I walked out of there fuming with anger. This was the last straw. I had tolerated her slanders and toxic behavior for too long because I rarely saw her, but this time, she had gone too far. I couldn't just sit back and let her get away with it. It was time to teach her a lesson she would never forget. My first move was to expose her in her precious suburban neighborhood. She loved to show off and pretend she was something she wasn't, and I knew just how to shatter that illusion. I had been to a few of the neighborhood parties when visiting with my husband, so I knew exactly how they all tried to outdo each other. My mother-in-law was no different, often passing off cheap bakery treats as creations from a famous chef. I decided it was time to reveal the truth and expose all her secrets. When I invited everyone over, I decided it was time to expose the truth. I revealed where the so-called gourmet sweets actually came from a local bakery, not the high-end patisserie my mother-in-law had bragged about. I didn't stop there. I also exposed her imported English vase, which she claimed was a rare find from Australia, but was actually a mass-produced item available on Etsy. Watching her lies unravel and her reputation crumble in front of her friends brought me a sense of satisfaction. 
but I wasn't done yet I had one more card to play. Since I was already at her house, I decided to wait for my father-in-law to return home. When he arrived, he was surprised to see me, knowing I was supposed to catch a flight back to Portland that day. He asked why I hadn't left, and I told him there was something important he needed to know. I shared with him that I had recently learned about my mother-in-law's affair with one of the assistant directors during our trip to the Bahamas. I explained that my husband had told me about it after hearing it from one of the set staff who had caught them together in the prop room. My husband had wanted to keep it a secret, not wanting to be the one to cause trouble in their marriage. But after everything my mother-in-law had put me through, especially at the airport, I felt no such obligation. I wanted her to suffer the consequences of her actions. So, I laid everything out in front of my father-in-law, leaving nothing unsaid. The next day, I left her house, confident that her pretentious little life was about to fall apart. Despite the satisfaction of exposing her lies, I couldn't shake a nagging feeling that I might have gone too far. In my anger, I may have hurt my husband by revealing the truth about his mother's affair. I regretted that part a little, and I couldn't help but wonder was I being the a-hole here? A week passed, and I found out that my mother-in-law had returned home. Before she did, though, she had already tried to stir up trouble. She told my husband that I hadn't gone to New Caledonia because I was tired of traveling all the time just to spend a few days with him. She claimed I didn't think it was worth the effort anymore. That lying woman actually thought she could create a misunderstanding between us. It took me nearly three hours to reassure my husband that I love our life together and that I miss the plane due to a simple misunderstanding. I decided not to explain everything to him over the phone, especially after I had already revealed his mother's affair to his father. I knew that once she arrived home, she would find the mess waiting for her, and I was eagerly anticipating the call I was sure to receive once she did. Now, I'm just waiting for that moment, and when it happens, I'll be ready to update her on what I've done. I finally got to see her reaction, and let me tell you, I did not expect my mother-in-law to show up at my house unannounced. When she did, I was both surprised and a bit relieved, because it meant I could witness firsthand the fury on her face as she grappled with the chaos that her life had become. The look of sheer anger she gave me when I politely invited her in was all the satisfaction I needed. The moment she stepped inside, she exploded with rage. She screamed at me, calling me all sorts of names, and told me that I had no right to do what I did. She said I was a jerk and that karma would surely come back to bite me. According to her, I should be ashamed of causing strife in the family. She even went as far as to say that I didn't deserve her son, claiming she had known all along that sooner or later I would show my true colors. I could see she was on the verge of slapping me, but somehow, she held herself back. Her outburst reignited all the anger I had been suppressing for so long. I couldn't hold back any longer and told her that she was lucky I only exposed her secrets. If I had really wanted to get back at her, I could have pressed charges for the false accusations she made against me at the airport. After that, I told her to get out of my house. But instead of feeling better, I felt worse. It's been three months since that confrontation, and a lot has happened since then. My mother-in-law has been fighting non-stop with my father-in-law ever since I exposed her affair. Initially, I thought it was a one-time thing, but it turns out she was still seeing that person, and she eventually confessed this to my father-in-law. Once he found out, he kicked her out of the house, and she's been living with her sister ever since. Two weeks, I went to talk to my father-in-law because the guilt was eating me up. I felt responsible for the fights between them, but he assured me I had nothing to feel guilty about. He told me this wasn't the first time something like this had happened, but it was definitely the last. They are now separated, and he has no intention of getting back together with her. I'm left feeling conflicted about everything. They still haven't told my husband about the separation, and they've asked me to keep it a secret until he returns home. My father-in-law wants to be the one to break the news to him in person. I'm just waiting for the right time, but it's hard to know how to feel about all of this. I know my in-laws had been lying to my husband for a while, pretending they had worked things out between them. It made me feel like I was caught in the middle, like an unfaithful wife, even though I never wanted any of this to happen. Finally, my husband came home last week, and five days ago, he met with my father-in-law. That's when he found out about his parents' separation. 
To my surprise, he was pretty understanding about it. But when he learned that I was the one who had triggered this whole mess, he was understandably upset. He asked me why I had done all of this, and I explained everything starting from what happened at the airport to all the things that had happened before then. I apologized to him, telling him that I already felt guilty about my actions. I never intended for things to escalate this far. Thankfully, my husband understood the situation and said that this was bound to come out eventually. We're not completely okay yet, but I'm hopeful that, with time, we'll be fine. Now, looking back, I realized that while my mother-in-law was certainly out of line, my actions were also harsh. I agree with those who think what I did was wrong. By trying to take her down, I ended up hurting my father-in-law and betraying the trust my husband had in me when he confided about the affair. That's not something I'm proud of, and it definitely makes me look like the bad guy in this situation. I have to admit, both my mother-in-law and I acted immaturely, like we were in some kind of middle school drama. Instead of communicating and resolving our issues like adults, we both made choices that led to this entire mess. It's clear that we both share the blame, and honestly, we deserve the fallout that came from it. On a different note, I also wanted to share something else that's been weighing on my mind. I'm a 21-year-old female, and I have a 25-year-old cousin who got engaged about five months ago. While preparing for the wedding, my cousin mentioned she wanted to wear a diamond necklace to match her reception gown. My aunt then asked if I could let her borrow the diamond necklace that I inherited from my great-grandmother after her passing. Everyone in my family knows how much that necklace means to me. It's the last thing I have for my great-grandmother, and it's incredibly special. So, I flat-out refused and told them that the necklace is very delicate and I didn't want to share it. I even offered to let her use another necklace that I got from my grandfather, but she insisted on having that specific one. I had to be firm and strictly forbade anyone from touching that necklace. As much as I wanted to be accommodating, I couldn't risk something happening to the last piece I have from my great-grandmother. I thought I had made it very clear that the necklace was off-limits, but on the day of the reception, I noticed my cousin wearing the exact same necklace. I was furious, but I chose not to make a scene. It was her wedding, after all, and I didn't want to ruin it for her. When I asked my mother about it, she told me that my father had tried to stop my cousin from borrowing the necklace, but she kept pestering him until he finally gave in. Even though I was angry, I couldn't really blame my dad. My cousin can be incredibly persistent and difficult to deal with. After the reception ended and the party started, I quietly took back my necklace and left the venue without saying a word. The next day, after everyone had sobered up, I received a call from my cousin, who was crying and accusing me of stealing her jewelry. Her husband got on the phone and even threatened to press charges. I calmly explained to him that the necklace rightfully belonged to me and that my cousin had borrowed it without my permission. He didn't believe me and called me a liar, insisting that I was the one who had borrowed her jewelry. At that point, my mother, who had been listening to the whole conversation, had had enough and ended the call. Later, some of my relatives criticized me for taking back the necklace without saying anything and even called me an a-hole for not sharing it from the start, claiming that it didn't really belong to me. I might have been seen as an a-hole for not sharing, but I can't understand what I did wrong by reclaiming what was mine. The necklace was always mine, and I didn't think it was wrong to take it back after it was borrowed without my consent. Now, I'm left wondering how to address the situation with my dad. I've never had to confront him before, and I'm unsure how to go about it. Should I ask him to give me the key to the safe where my jewelry is kept, or should I just ask him not to give away my things without asking me first? My dad has apologized, but he's still hesitant about letting me have control over the safe for my jewelry. My aunt eventually called and asked them not to press charges, so now I'm just waiting to see how things turn out. As for me, I'm not sure if I'm in the wrong here. Some people might think I could have handled it differently, but I believe that taking back what was rightfully mine was the right thing to do. I know you're young, but it's important to start securing anything valuable from now on. No one else should have access to your personal belongings. Your father shouldn't have handed over your necklace to your cousin, especially without telling you. It's time to invest in a small safe where you can keep your valuables safe and secure. It's too easy for someone to borrow something like that and never return it. Since you're 20, getting your own safe and moving everything important into it is a wise decision. 
Your property is yours, and your father shouldn't have been the one to give it away, even to family. You should also consider asking your father to call your cousin and her husband to make it clear that any attempt to press charges will be met with legal action, such as a cease and desist order. It sounds like your cousin may have been envious of your necklace all along and used her wedding as an excuse to take something she felt more entitled to than you. She's seven years older, so she might have some feelings about it, but that doesn't justify what she did. Talk to your father, get your things back, and get your own safe. Clearly, he can't be trusted not to give in to pressure and loan out your belongings after you've already said no. On a different note, my sister, who is 24, has been living with me, 26-year-old female for the past three years. I told her she could stay with me as long as she wanted, but she needed to follow my rules. One of the main rules is that she can't have men over. She can invite people in, but they can't stay overnight. I've been pretty lenient, honestly. She's had both male and female friends stay overnight without my permission, and I didn't say anything because I knew her friends and didn't think it was a big deal. But last week, she crossed the line by bringing a stranger into our home without my knowledge. I was home at the time, and she waited until she thought I was fully asleep before letting the man in. She probably thought I wouldn't notice and wouldn't get caught, but this morning, I woke up really early and saw an extra pair of shoes that didn't belong to either of us. That's when I realized someone else was in the house. After the stranger left, I confronted my sister and told her that what she did was completely disrespectful and not okay. I warned her that if she ever does it again, she'll have to move out. My mom thinks I'm overreacting and should just let it slide because my sister is young and wants to enjoy her life. I don't want to be the strict, boring sister, but my sister and my mom both know how deeply shaken I was when someone tried to break into my home while I was alone. That experience left me feeling scared and vulnerable, and it's the main reason I'm so cautious about having strangers in my house. It's not just a small rule. It's about feeling safe in my own home. My sister has been living with me for free, and I've been okay with that because she's family. I love her, and I want to help her out. But when she disrespects my boundaries, it crosses a line. I've made it clear that if she does something like this again, I won't hesitate to ask her to leave. It's not something I want to do, but I need to protect my own peace of mind. I really appreciate all the advice and honest feedback you all have given me. I guess I needed to hear it from others to really understand what I should do. My sister is my only sibling, and because of that, I've always felt a strong responsibility to take care of her. But now I realize that part of caring for her is also giving her some tough love when it's needed. After talking things over, we've decided that it's best for her to move back in with our mom. She does have a job, but she's gotten used to me paying for everything, and I see now that I've been enabling her behavior. This situation has taught me an important lesson. While she'll always be my family, she needs to grow up and learn to take care of herself. It's my house, and that means it's my rules. Sure, my sister is an adult, and she's entitled to have guests over. But it's just basic courtesy to let the other people in the house know when someone is coming over, especially when it's a stranger. Bringing strangers into our home without telling me isn't just inconsiderate, it's also unsafe. My sister knew exactly why I have this rule in place. She was fully aware of my past experience and how it's made me extra cautious. Yet, she still chose to break the rule. If our mom thinks it's not a big deal, then maybe my sister should move back in with her and see how long it takes before our mom gets upset when she brings strangers home. My sister is 24 years old, not 15. I've been more than generous by letting her live with me for free, even when she's broken some very basic rules of common courtesy. I have a very valid reason for not wanting strangers in my home, and if my mom and sister can't understand that, it's on them. I've decided that I need to stand firm. It's my house, and my rules should be respected. If my sister can't follow them, then she'll need to find a new place to live. There's no reason for me to feel bad about this situation. My mom and sister might be trying to make me feel guilty, but I've realized that I can't let them manipulate my feelings. I don't deserve that, and I'm not going to allow it to happen. If my mom really believes that my sister is just young and should be allowed to do whatever she wants, then she can take her in. The truth is, my sister's behavior is putting both of us in danger. We're three women living alone, and it's just not smart or safe to bring a strange man into our home, especially without my knowledge. 
And really, if she wanted to spend time with this guy, why didn't she go to his place? Maybe he doesn't have a place of his own, or maybe he's already living with someone else. Either way, my sister's refusal to take my rules seriously means she needs to find her own place. That way, she can invite people over whenever she wants, and I can have the peace of mind I need. In the end, I love my sister, and I want the best for her. But part of that means helping her understand the importance of respecting other people's boundaries. She needs to learn that her actions have consequences, and if she can't respect my rules, she'll have to face the reality of finding her own place to live.